All right, guys, I believe I am live now on uh, YouTube. Um, technical difficulties with IG Live. But um, anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and say, first of all, I, I was doing live videos on YouTube and usually also on IGTV um, you know, every Friday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the United States. And I'm going to start doing that again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post every Wednesday in... Um, my Instagram feed, my Instagram stories, my YouTube community tab, and my YouTube um, stories. I'm going to go ahead and just post that. I'm going to be going live on Friday at 12 Eastern Standard Time. And if you have any questions, when I post that, you know, the feed in IG and the, uh, you know, the community tab in, um, in YouTube, you just go ahead and you, po you just go ahead and post any questions you have and I will address them. Okay, so if you can't watch me live, Post your questions, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, you know just answer them at the beginning of the video, okay? Before I start taking questions. So um, first of all, let me just go ahead and say uh, what I wanted to talk about today was this trend now that people who have never done calisthenics, never done home workouts, never done body weight, are all of a sudden experts, and you get all. I did a video, um, you know, just a couple days ago about exactly this problem. You know, everybody's at home because the gyms are closed because of the coronavirus. A lot of people have to stay at home. A lot of people are staying at home, self quarantining, and um, you know, so all of these people that built their bodies with barbells, dumbbells, cable machines, you know, and stuff like that. Um, opinion on calisthenics for cutting. I'm going to get to exactly that in a second. Uh, so anyway, all these people who built their bodies with weights and with machines and stuff like that are telling you, you know, grab like, you know, grab an orange in each hand and do like a little, you know, twist with your arms. You're going to build these giant delts. When they built these giant delts by doing like, you know, lateral raises with like, you know, 500 pound dumbbells. Okay. So what I'm saying, what I said basically at the end was like, if a guy, you know, was not like, you know, last week or two weeks ago, an expert in calisthenics, don't believe what he says now. You know, if last week he was in a gym using concentration curls, don't believe what he's saying now about doing towel, you know, bicep, you know, curls or something like that, you know, or you're holding a jug of water and doing bicep curls. Okay. So what I'm, what I want to say, however, is I build my body actually to this day using calisthenics. So I actually think my opinion matters. Okay. When I first started, um, that was 39 and a half, 39 and three quarters years old. I was, it was just like four months before my 40th birthday. I was very overweight. Okay. And I lost like almost 40 pounds in under four months. And I did it absolutely 100% using plyometrics, okay? So that means uh, three times a week, I would do plyometrics, like different explosive push-ups, explosive jumping and stuff like that. All I used was an uh, aerobic step, okay? And I did burpees on that day. And then uh, other three days a week, I did basically just jump rope intervals, Okay, just intervals with a jump rope. So, and that is absolutely positively all I did. As a matter of fact, I made a course out of that and I filmed the course in my living room. I pushed everything off to the side, set up a camera and filmed the videos for the course in my living room. So that's how I went from being very overweight to being ripped, like just lean as all hell because I had, I was fat. I mean, look at my Instagram, go scroll all the way down. You'll see like my before pictures when I was extraordinarily fat, you know, and I had, um, you know, I had just had love handles. I mean, uh, just huge amounts of fat hanging down everywhere. And at the end I was ripped. And my goal at that time, that was right around the time when the movie Ninja Assassin came up. You know, and that was my goal. I was like, I didn't want to look like a ninja assassin because I did concentration curls and got on the you know step mill or something like that. I wanted to, I wanted to like become a ninja assassin. Like if somebody came up to me and said, I want to become a ninja assassin, what do you do? So I did these jumping exercises, these explosive exercises, these anaerobic sprinting type exercises, and it worked perfectly for me. So for the guy who just asked, you know, question about, um, you know, about calisthenics for cutting, that was exactly how I did it, okay? Um, basically, what I did is I just took in a little bit of carbs before and after workouts with protein. Uh, the rest of the day was protein, and um, I added in fat as I went along. So actually, 
I ate more and more and more as I went along, which is another difference between the way most people do it. They'll have like a, sh a small caloric deficit and they'll increase the caloric deficit as you go along. You know, do more cardio and, and eat less food. And, you know, at the end, you're in starvation mode, which is great for a bodybuilding competition because the first thing you do is you bulk up and get ready for the next one next year. But if you're a normal person like me, what do you do when you're starving yourself or you're doing two hours of cardio a day? So what I actually did was I cut everything more in the beginning. Okay, I cut down on my calories and everything more in the beginning and I added in as I, you know, as I progressed. So I was like at maintenance calories towards the end. So uh, for the guy who asked about, you know, calisthenics for cutting, that's exactly what I did. And like I said, you know, I consider myself um, an expert at body weight and calisthenics training because all I used was a jump rope. I had a free timer app on my phone to, to time intervals and rest periods. And I jumped back and forth over an aerobic step. You know, and as a matter of fact, when I filmed this video, I literally took a dish pan and jumped back and forth over that instead of the, the aerobic step. So that's you know a perfect workout that you could literally just do, you know, at home and get cut. I was very lean. I think I looked better than Rain, who's the Korean pop star who played, you know, he's the actor who played the movie, Ninja Assassin. Um, but I wasn't big enough. Okay, so what I did then was I started doing actual calisthenics. I started doing pull-ups. I started doing dips. Um, I was doing dips on rings. I was doing push-ups on rings. I did rows, body weight squats, hanging leg raises, 100% nothing but, um, you know, body weight, okay? Now, when you use rings, okay, and I've had a lot of people do that. A lot of people have used rings and they just like, man, you changed my life by suggesting the rings. Like if, if you could do 20 dips on a bar, like on parallel bars, you could probably do, if you're lucky, 10 dips on, on gymnastics rings. It makes it that much harder. So, um, you know, like I said, by doing push-ups and, and dips on rings, by doing pull-ups, by doing rows, um, hanging leg raises in, um, and, and, and body weight squats, I built up a bigger body, okay? So I was like still rock hard muscle. I mean, a lot of people, when I coach them, okay, I'll ask them, what do you want to look like? And a lot of people will show me a picture from my own Instagram account from when I was just using body weight exercise. Like, I want to look like that. You know, lean, rock hard, not too big, but lean, rock hard, and, you know, just absolutely ripped, okay? So I was a bigger version of the person that I was when I did just plyometrics, just interval training, okay? Um, at that point, I dropped the, uh, the carbs from my diet and I went, I'm not gonna call it straight keto because a lot of, because the protein was very high I, and I uh, manipulated the fat. Because the way it works is this, you need protein. Okay, you need protein to build muscle, you need protein to build organs, you know, your body regenerates constantly. I mean, you need protein for everything. And also, if you're at a caloric deficit, you need protein to protect everything. You need actually more protein. So I always kept my protein high, and the difference between my bulking and my cutting was I added or subtracted the amount of fat that I was eating. Okay, so if I was, um, you know, if I wanted to bulk up a little bit, I'd have more fat, which meant more calories. If I wanted to cut a little bit, I just cut down on the fat, cut down on the calories. And, um, you know, another thing I liked about that is because I was keto the whole time, I was never eating carbs. What basically happened is I did not have to transition into a cutting diet. You know, I could go from like today up to tomorrow. I just cut a little bit of fat out. My body's already primed to burn fat. I'm not taking as much dietary fat in, so there's no competition with body fat. You know, I, if you take in a lot of fat, your body doesn't have to burn body fat. If you get your body fat adapted, your body's burning, and fat adaptation is another subject that goes beyond ketosis. It's not just being in ketosis to be truly fat adapted, but when you're, you know, amongst other things, you're fat adapted, amongst other things you're in ketosis, your body is burning fat. So if you cut down the fat you take in, your body is forced to burn more body fat. Okay, it's just no other choice. There's no carbs, so it has to burn fat. You're not eating that much fat, so boom, more body fat. Oh, damn. 
<laughs> All right, good job, brother. Excellent, excellent. You know, when my uh, personal training clients who transition into the anaerobics fraternity, uh, you know, he says that he's he's starting to feel like you know see some of the muscles he's been building up with these uh, workouts. And that is another guy who you know talking about whether you can get in shape in a uh, you know just with body weight. This guy is literally going to a park across the street and getting on the pull up bar, you know, the dip bars and stuff like that, right there. Um, he's working out sometimes at home and sometimes in the park. So, you know, it's, it's basically, it is absolutely possible to get in really good shape just using body weight. Okay. So anyway, what I was saying, um, you know, I manipulated my diet. That's how I built muscle, built strength and cut down on fat, you know, depending upon whether I was trying to, you know, bulk up or cut down. And, um, you know, and there I got to a point where I had a hell of a body, you know, if I say so myself, and um, I wanted more. Okay, once again, you know, just like when I got ripped to shreds using just plyometrics and interval training, then I was like ripped to shreds and bigger and stronger by using body weight training. I just wanted something more. So what I did is um, I just added weights to my calisthenics because something I never wanted is when I was a kid, before YouTube, before all this stuff came up, very rarely you would see uh, weightlifters, bodybuilders on TV. And they had what well, Kiana Tom had her, uh, oh, damn, I wish I can't believe I forgot it. I follow her on Instagram. Uh, she, Kiana Tom, she was like a, a Hawaiian girl, you know, very good looking, you know, very good shape. And she had, uh, was it body shaping, I think was what it was called. You know, so there were bodybuilders actually on TV lifting weights. And that was like pretty cool. And I think Flex Magazine once in a while had something on, uh, like on ESPN or something like this. And I saw, I think it was on Flex Magazine, it was a guy, he was doing dips. Huge, extremely strong, extremely muscular guy. And he was doing like sets of like five sets of eight dips at body weight. He was not very impressive. And I was like, oh my God, you know, that guy is fucking weak. You know, big, giant, huge guy, scares the hell out of everyone that sees him, but he could not even do body weight dips. So I never want to get to the point where I could lift like 500 pounds in the bench press and I could only do two half range dips or something like that, you know? And as a matter of fact, uh, I was living in Germany when I first started doing my plyometrics, started getting interested in body weight training. And a friend of mine, we were both bouncers. Um, you know, I had really good situational awareness and some really good dirty tricks like head butting and, you know, elbows and stuff. And that's why this giant monster of a guy could work as a bouncer and I could be at the same level as him because he was just huge. Very, very strong guy. He would do like pull downs with his son pushing down on his shoulders and stuff, you know, crazy stuff like that. Um, okay, great question. Thoughts on calisthenics without pulling exercises due to uh, tendonitis. Okay, I know all about that. I'm going to get to that. But anyway, this guy could do pull downs with huge amounts of weight, you know, way over his body weight. And then one time he was like, you know, going to try to do some of the exercises that I did. He could barely do like one or two chin ups. Or they weren't even very, you know, good form. He could, he could not get into a handstand, much less do handstand push ups, even though he had the strength to, to press just bars with all kinds of weight. You know, so like I said, I never wanted to be like that. So when I decided to get bigger and decided to get stronger, I still did the same calisthenics workouts, but I added weight, okay? So instead of doing knee bends, I would do squats with weight on my back, okay? I'm still bending, my, you know, bending down, squatting down, and standing up, okay? Instead of doing dips, I did dips with weight around my waist. Instead of doing pull-ups, I did pull-ups with weight around my waist, etc. cetera. Um, you know, and the one thing that I did add in is the trap bar deadlift, which once again, is basically like just squatting down and standing up again. And um, so what I was able to do is I was able to, Ethan, what's up? <laughs> I, what I was able to do is I was able to maintain the strength, maintain the range of motion, you know, maintain the ability to move my body through space, but with so much extra weight. And um, I basically, full disclosure, you know, perfect diet, perfect training, perfect everything, do you think body weight training of free weights makes for a more rounded work? I'll get to you in a second. But anyway, so like I said, I, um, you know, what basically what happened is, you know, I, I added weights in to my calisthenics. I ate a perfect diet, okay? It was high fat, high protein, 
like 60% fat, um, you know, uh, 40% protein, uh, carbs as low as possible. And yeah, and I jumped on TRT uh, at that time. And uh, with a combination of all of that, within a year and a half, I put on like, you know, over 15 pounds of muscle, which is not a huge amount. I mean, 18 months putting on like 15 pounds or so of muscle, you know, it's not a massive amount, but it was just incredible, like that I was able to bring my body to the next level. So, um, you know, for the people who think that you cannot get a good workout using body weight, I transformed my body three times. You know, I transformed my body by just cutting huge amount of fat and getting ripped to shreds using nothing but burpees, plyometrics, and jump rope. Then I had a doorway mounted pull-up bar with rings hanging from it. Ring push-ups, ring dips, uh, pull-ups and ring rows and body weight squats and uh, hanging leg raises okay as a matter of fact if you watch my last youtube video down in the uh down in the uh section below you can actually see the workout i did i actually filmed it years ago that got me bigger stronger and then like i said my my strength and everything just uh you know exploded uh, right now, I weigh a little bit over 200 pounds. I'm doing uh, two sets, working up to two sets of five dips on bars with 180 pounds extra weight around my waist. I finally got up to doing four plates, 405 pounds for two sets of five reps uh, squats with the barbell. After that, I do uh, 20 reps with 315 pounds of squats breathing squats which means i bump out maybe like 10 and i take a few breaths leaving the bar on my shoulders a couple more a couple more a couple more until i've done 20 reps then i rack the bar so then um and you know i'm doing uh like i said I'm, I'm i'm extremely strong okay and uh but i still can move my body you know i still can do with 180 pounds i do better range of motion dips than a lot of people that i see doing body weight dips so that's for the person who just asked about adding in free weights, um, you know, I do barbell squats and I also do trap bar deadlifts um, and, um, you know, stuff like that. So you might say that I do some weighted exercise, but like I said, I mean, all it is is really just me moving my body through the, um, you know, through the, uh, through the same range of motion. I, uh, Ethan just asked again, uh, you know, did the buy gym close down because of the coronavirus? No, they're uh, very serious about letting only 50 people in. I went yesterday, I think it was, and I actually had to wait like five minutes before I got in because you have to wait for somebody to leave. Uh, and I am looking right now at um, getting, uh, getting equipment at home to go ahead and continue my workouts. So this is the next thing that I wanted to talk about. So like, um, Squats and calf raises are enough for the low body in the current gym scenario. Um, yeah, I, okay, so I like to do squats, okay, but I also like to do trap bar deadlifts. If I could not do trap bar deadlifts, I would do squats and I would do stiff-legged or Romanian, stiff-legged deadlifts, okay? Because uh, basically I want to squat down and I want to have a hinge, which means basically I'm like moving from my hips, okay? Um, I think that's great because when I squat, I squat deep enough, so I'm using my quads, but I'm also using my lower back, my ass, my hamstrings. But I also want to do a type of deadlift, whether it's stiff-legged or trap bar, that will hit my hamstrings and my ass and my back, my lower back, primarily. So the way I describe it to my, my, my clients that I train online is like, the squats hit your quads hard, okay? and you know your lower back and your ass and your hamstrings a little bit then your um you know the trap bar hits your lower back your ass and your hamstrings hard and it also hits your quads so i uh, i think that i personally have really good genetics yeah i think that the co the coronavirus is is, is over is overrated too uh really and I think, honestly, that the uh, this is something I don't really like to talk about, like, you know, just sensationalist shit. But honestly, I think that the big scare that's going on is going to be doing more damage to the economy, you know, than anything else. And anybody who says that money's not important, you know, well, you know, you go ahead and you just quit your job. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, just quit your job and then see how, how that fucking gets you. Because the fact of the matter is this is just going to be... Uh, you know, it's, it's, I'll get, I'll get into this maybe in another video, but yeah, I think this is overblown. I think that more damage is being done by the, uh, scare tactics 
as opposed to the actual damage that's going to be done by the uh, virus itself. But we'll get into that, um, you know, maybe in another video. Uh, so yeah, like I said, the bottom line is, you know, you could get in awesome shape at home, okay, and uh, with no equipment whatsoever. If you add in a pull-up bar and some rings, you could get in awesome shape, plus you can get big, okay? And if you do go ahead and you get like dip bars where you can add, you know, where you can put serious weight on your body and do dips with, some rings, uh, you know, in a power rack or a squat rack, they're doing more long-term damage, shutting everything down. Exactly, exactly. Um, so anyway, like I said, I mean, if, you know, so, so depending upon what level you're at, you can do some serious workout. Like, for less than I would pay for a year of my gym membership, I could actually get everything I need to do all the workouts I do, and I'm advanced. You know, I need like, you know, 500 pounds of weight. I need a trap bar, a squat bar, uh, a dip bar, rings, and, uh, you know, a, a squat rack slash pull-up rack, okay? That's about as advanced as you're going to get, you know? Um, and I could get that right now for less than I actually pay for my gym membership for a year. And like I said, if you want to just get lean, if you want to just get cut, do the plyometrics and the jump, what's the jump rope cost? Maybe $12, $13 on Amazon, you know? A free app to time your workouts. And um, like I said, if you want to go ahead and bump it up a little bit, um, the pull-up tower, and then once again, if you watch my last video, you'll actually see that there's a, um, you'll actually see uh, another video. It was One of them was like my old body weight workout. The other one was my uh, old body weight setup. What do I think about kettlebell swings? I'll get to that in a second. Um, the other one was basically just my setup, and it was like a uh, 50 dollar or twenty dollar uh resistance band training one second like uh like a doorway mounted uh pull-up bar with 30 dollar rings hanging from it so total was like maybe 50 dollars and then uh the better one i graduated from that to having a 99 dollar um pull-up slash dip station that i got from amazon i got it from walmart you could get the same one from amazon and i hung my 30 dollar ring so it's like 130 dollars and that was like the intermediate setup. And like I said, you could get an insane killer body. So let me just go ahead and say this first. For all the people out there, I hate it when bodybuilders say, yeah, you know, dips and, you know, and pull-ups and stuff like that. You know, you're not, you know, it's just, it's just endurance work once you get past 10 reps. There is not a single bodybuilder, you know, maybe one or two, but in general, there's not a single bodybuilder out there who can do proper, proper pull-ups and proper ring dips you know it just doesn't happen i mean i'm talking like full extension bringing the bar up to your chest holding it for a count full extension one rep and doing like 10 reps are perfect like that perfect 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 you don't see it they do like uh, 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 and then they're like oh yeah you know that's not enough weight for me i mean so if you could do like four sets of 10 proper parallel grip pull-ups parallel grip because wide hits your lats narrow palms facing you hits your buys in the middle um you know hitting your hits your lats and your biceps ethan proper dips period let alone ring dicks exactly you don't see like i said i throw 180 pounds around my waist and i do better dips than most people do with their body weight and like i said if you do ring dips you're actually cutting the amount in half so if, like i said if you could do 20 dips on bars you could do maybe 10 dips on rings it's a complete difference so you know, anybody who says that you cannot build an incredible body just doing body weight is, is, is wrong. You know, if you do proper pull-ups, proper dips, proper dips on rings, if you do push-ups with proper form, you know, full range of motion, really concentrating into your pecs, and then you do them on rings, I mean, your body just changes completely, okay? Um, yeah. Don't know where I was at. Okay, so anyway, some people are asking about kettlebell swings. Um, you know, I've never really done kettlebell swings. I mean, I, I, I've, I've done them. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad exercise. It certainly is a good exercise. Basically, what you do is you stand your legs kind of wide. You hold a, you know, a, a weight in between your hands, and you kind of like stand up and swing it up. So you're using, you're doing like almost like squats. You got your back, you know, bending up. Um, you know, it, it's like your back, your shoulders a little bit, your legs, uh, because it's weighted, you're using a little bit extra, you know, calories, you're getting a little bit more explosive. Honestly, um, it's not my cup of tea. I think, you know, kettlebells are great. I think kettlebells are an incredible workout. 
Uh, you could do a lot with kettlebells. It's I think kettlebells are excellent for health slash sports performance. So if you want to do like Turkish get up where you lay on the ground, or you hold the kettlebell above you and you stand up and you have to like balance it. Okay, it's like all these little muscles are getting strengthened, which is important for health to stabilize your body because as you grow older, you lose stability. Old ladies and old men fall down, break their hips. You know, the stronger you have this stability, then the better you'll age. Okay, and the same thing with sports. You know, if you're like boxing or whatever, having all those small muscles in your body will, um, you know, strengthen, will, will work out. Uh, personally, I don't like. Uh, doing them myself. Like I said, I'd rather do burpees than kettlebell swings, but that's just me. I'm not saying it's a bad workout. The good thing about it is once again, you know, I mean, just buy yourself one kettlebell and you could do, you know, you could do your kettlebell swings with it. You know, you could do kettlebell swings for intervals. Personally, I'd rather do burpees for intervals, but like I said, that's just me. Uh, somebody asked about resistance bands. Do not like them. I do not like resistance bands. The only time that I would not that I personally would recommend somebody using a resistance band is if they're trying to break into doing, um, you know, like pull-ups or something like that, and they'll use the resistance band. But honestly, I've never really used a resistance band. I'm, it's not my thing. Um, once again, I just don't. I just don't like it because it's like it's calisthenics. You basically do a more difficult exercise. You make the leverage worse, you make it less stable, like doing bar dips and then doing ring dips where you actually have to like tense every muscle in your body just to keep the rings in place and still have to have the strength to do dips, push-ups, you know, stuff like that. That's, you know, how you make things harder. You make the, the leverage worse, you make it less stable. Leverage being like, you know, do push-ups on your knees and then do push-ups with your legs straight. It makes the leverage worse, it makes it harder. You know, so you basically make the leverage worse or you make it less stable and that's how you increase your calisthenics. Then you start adding weight, okay? So those are the ways that you, um, you know, the ways that you may increase the difficulty by doing calisthenics. With weights, you can do that. You curl a five pound dumbbell or a 25 pound dumbbell. Obviously, the 25 pound dumbbell is gonna be harder, make you stronger and bigger. But with bands, it's like, you can't really, you could get like stronger bands that offer more resistance, but I, honestly, I would, I, I don't like bands. I think they're kind of like a halfway thing. I, I say do calisthenics or do weights, you know, one or the other. Um, you know, like I said, I, I, if, if I had the choice to do ba resistance bands or just, you know, like pull-ups, push-ups kind of stuff like that, I do the pull-ups, push-ups, you know, and like I said, if you don't want to do that, I would just actually you use weights. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, so like I said, you could you could accomplish quite a bit. You could build like I could do everything that I wanted to at home with my, um, you know, with like I said, with with equipment that would cost less than one year of a gym membership, and I'd have it at home. How often do I recommend stretching for? Okay, I stretch a lot. Okay, I come from martial arts. That was like my original. You know, that's where I grew up, and uh, you know, I still have it in me. You know, like I still have. Um, Time and attention to push-ups in a pyramid format once and not done a chest workout that's compared to that sentence. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's another one. That's another one. Time under tension, obviously, is another thing. You know, if you do a chin-up or, you know, a pull-up or whatever, and if you do it where you pull up and you hold yourself, and then maybe, like, either slowly let yourself down or you let yourself down halfway and hold it and then lower yourself down, that's a huge difference, a huge difference. Yeah, time under tension is definitely... Another way, another way, leverage, stability, and time under tension. Those are three ways to increase difficulty with calisthenics for sure, for sure. Um, it's not really my cup of tea, but it certainly is. Yeah, Franco Colombo said all you need to build a wide back with slow wide grip pull-ups. Exactly. Uh, Franco, if you watch, okay, so bodybuilding.com did um, a couple of interviews with Arnold Schwarzenegger where he was actually being interviewed by the owner of a supplement company and you know obviously it was like basically like an infomercial but the point is it was an excellent excellent interview it was like him about cutting and him about bulking and um you know some guy the guy interviewing him said you know yeah you know I get these big bodybuilders and they say i'm too big to do uh pull-ups and what arnold schwarzenegger said was i love this guy but he's like so open and honest he said listen you know if you're a 250 pound guy you should have the strength of a 250 pound guy you know, and he said when he trained with Franco and they did back and, you know, he said, Arnold Schwarzenegger said he himself had like a 25 pound weight around his waist and he was struggling, you know, big guy, like, you know, way over 200 pounds. And Ar uh, Franco was like a 185 pound guy, a short little guy. 
and uh, he had like a 45 pound plate around his waist and he's killing Arnold with, you know, the number of pull-ups he's doing. And he said, pound for pound, Franco was stronger than Arnold. He said, he's like, pound for pound, he was stronger than me. You know, and that's it. You know, if you look at, um, if you look at, at Franco Colombo, he was extraordinarily athletic. You know, I mean, he, I've seen pictures of him doing a front lever where basically you hold yourself, your body's level to the ground and you're holding yourself up with a, you know, with, 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 with a bar. It's insane. And he's a giant bodybuilder. And, um, yeah, Franco was, uh, incredible. And, uh, it's absolutely positively true. You know, if you want to get a wide back, you've got to do pull-ups, you know? Thoughts on incorporating skills, L-sits, handstands, planche, front lever. Okay, I'm going to get to you. That's actual, actually something that I've uh, not spoken about a lot, but something I've been thinking about a lot. Okay, so and, um, and uh, but getting back to Franco and Arnold. Arnold, I don't remember what book it was. It was one of his books, you know, Education of a Bodybuilder or, you know, whatever. But it was one of his books, and uh, what he basically said is, like, you have no place in the gym until you can do calisthenics, you know. And it showed pictures of young Arnold doing handstand push-ups against a wall. You know, it showed him doing push-ups and, you know, body weight squats. And he's like, you know, get your body ready using calisthenics before you even get a gym membership. And that was Arnold Schwarzenegger saying that. Speaking of Franco Rip, yeah, I was, it's fun, it's not funny, it's it's sad. I was doing a uh, a live video when somebody commented, they're like, yeah, you know, he just heard Franco die. It's like, holy shit, it was right in the middle of a live video when, uh, you know, we found out that he died. And, um, yeah, you know, uh, I'm not a big fan of bodybuilding, but he's always been one of my, uh, one of my favorite bodybuilders. You know, uh, you know, ex, um, you know, ex-boxer, you know, um, just, uh, you know, incredible strength with his deadlift, you know, incredible strength with his pull-ups, incredible strength with different types of body weight stuff, um, incredible. And, um, yeah, you know, it's just shit that he uh, had to die. He also trained uh, Stallone back in the day, back when Stallone started getting some serious shape for, like, Rambo 2 and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, and Arnold's best friend. They uh, met in Munich. Arnold was from Austria, went to Germany, lived in Munich. And, um, yeah, and Franco was from an Italian island in the Mediterranean. He went to, uh, you know, he went to, uh, to live in Munich in Germany. That's where they met. They were both working in a gym, I think. And then uh, when, Frank, when Arnold came over, because Weeder sponsored him, he said, you need to get this guy over here, too. He's awesome. So he kind of talked Weeder into getting Franco over, and that's how Franco ended up here. But anyway, yeah, that's... Um, yeah, so somebody just asked about calisthenics skills. Well, I'm not into calisthenics skills as in like spinning around on one arm and doing a backflip and grabbing the bar again. But what you just said about planche, uh, L-sit, stuff like that, that's something that I actually did for quite a while and I never really spoke about it. Basically, it was uh, you know a couple times a week when I wasn't doing like a, um, you know, doing like a, uh, you know, calisthenics moving my body calisthenics type workout i would do like handstand against a wall hold it for a minute uh vince geronda push-ups or pull-ups i'll get to you in a second uh i would do basically I'd just hold a handstand against a wall you know and concentrate my body and this is something that people are talking about like oh that's easy i can do that and they go up for three seconds and then they jump down the fact is to do a proper 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 handstand against the wall you have to just tense every part of your body then I build up to doing it with one arm. So I'm like one arm hand standing against the wall for a minute, one arm hand standing against the wall for a minute, two arm hand standing against the wall for a minute. I did L sit, uh, I did side planks, planks, back bridges on my neck, back bridges on my shoulders, front bridges on my neck, and handstands against the wall on my neck, um, or my head rather, you know. Um, I would, I would pull myself up into a chin-up position and hold myself there for a minute. And then I started working towards one arm. That is extraordinarily difficult. Uh, so basically, yeah, uh, you know, for, for me, I believe in terms of longevity, in terms of health, and in terms of looking fucking good naked, if all you do, okay, is like three times a week, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you hold these static positions, you know, and the way I did it was I kind of had a system where I would do the harder ones first. So the L sits a son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, the uh, you know the, the the chin up hold, especially with one arm, is is just hell. Uh, one arm 
uh, handstanding against the wall, step my neck trying to do them. Yeah, yeah, seriously, it's hard just to get into the position, which is another point. Um, you know, just doing that, you build really dense, strong muscle. Like I was talking earlier about kettlebells, doing a handstand with one arm against a wall, you have immense strength in your shoulder and all the little you know connective tissue all the little muscles that you do not have when you're doing just like you know a machine or something like that so it's extremely healthy it's extremely healthy in terms of longevity because you can do that into the future frank colombo used to compete in the world's strongest man yeah he did and he was doing really good and he at one point he had like a refrigerator filled with sand. God knows how much that weighs. He was running with it and broke his femur, like his, his upper leg bone, Jesus Christ. What's my opinion on wall sits? One of the exercises that I did when I was doing these static holds was the wall sit. And how do you make it harder? Well, first of all, you have proper form. You hold it for a minute. And then second, you kick one leg out. Okay, so basically I have my, I'm doing a, on my left leg, I'm doing a, <laughs> a wall sit. And my right leg, I'm doing an L sit. Then I drop my right leg and pick up my left leg. So now that's a son of a bitch too because, you know, your leg that was being held out straight has to support your body. It's tired as hell. And then after that, for the third minute, I'd go ahead and I'd just have both legs and do an L-sit. So yeah, L-sits are an absolute killer too. Uh, but like I said, you can have an incredible body. If you're lean enough, you're going to have a great body. Like you're going to look awesome, you know. Um, because one of the things that I say is that Brad Pitt was scrawny in Fight Club, but that's the only, uh, that's the only time you're going to see posters of him. It's hard to find somewhere that sells posters that does not have a poster of him in Fight Club. He was huge when he played in Troy. You don't see pictures of him, you know, there. In Mr. and Mrs. Smith, he had a hell of a body, a lot bigger. You don't see pictures of him, but everybody wants to know how to look like Brad Pitt in, in uh, Fight Club. If you do just, like, holding these L-sit... Uh, wall sit, hand standing against a wall with one arm, with one leg, you know, chin up hold with one arm. If you just do that and you're lean enough that you can actually see uh, your body, you know, or you actually see your, you know, your muscle underneath, you're going to have a hell of a body and you're going to be strong and you're going to age well. So yeah, definitely. Uh, that's definitely a workout. And that's something also that I say for people who are like, uh, you know, oh, I'm too old or you know, my joints hurt or something like that. Fine. You can't do a handstand push up. Well, do a handstand and just hold it there. There's no movement in the joint. And the worst problem that you have, Brad Pitts was insane in Fight Club, probably very difficult. Yeah, he was very lean in Fight Club, but he was not very big. And that's like the thing I'm trying to say here is like, you know, you can get at least as big as him doing, you know, static exercises. But anyway, like I said, you know, so you can't do like, you know, military press or handstand push-ups, but you can hold yourself there and that will actually strengthen the muscles. So... You know, that's great if you have joint problems. That's great if you want to age well, if you want to uh, be healthy. You know, if you like I say, if you want to look good, do that. And then do like my pure protein diet to cut down the fat so you can actually see like all the muscles. You'll have a hell of a body without moving, you know, without moving. Without jumping up and down, without, you know, using weights or anything like that. You'll have a hell of a body. So, you know, wall sit and, you know, handstand holds and stuff like that are absolute killer. They're, they are extremely underrated. You can build a hell of a body. So this is, so, so let's, so let's, <laughs> let's just go ahead and talk about like, you know, the different way, things we've spoken about. Plyometrics, just jumping up and down, explosive push-ups, burpees, jump rope intervals, you know, all you need is basically a uh, jump rope and, um, you know, at a timer for your phone so you could time your workouts and just somewhere to jump and you could you get ripped to shreds and get an insane elite world-class level body i've done it you know like i said i lost almost 40 pounds in under four months went from being fat as fuck to having steroid accusations so you can get a credible body if you want to get a little bit bigger all you need is somewhere to do pull-ups hang rings off of it so you do pull-ups ring dips ring push-ups ring rows that's like the next level uh you know and like i said if you want to really go go crazy and just get big and like I said I put on like 15 ish pounds of muscle just by adding weights you know doing weight uh, doing uh, body weight squats will get you a great body doing squats with 400 pounds will get you a bigger great body you know doing dips will get you a great body doing dips with 180 pounds will get you a bigger great body um you know, so those are basically the levels. And like I said, you know, this conversation we just had right now about, you know, plank, side plank, handstand push-ups, bridging, uh, or sorry, handstand holds, bridging, 
chin up holds, things like that. That will get you an incredible body too. So these are all legitimate exercises and legitimate workouts that you can use to get an incredible body at home. I've done all of them. I've had incredible physiques through all of them. And, um, you know, and none of them involve doing any of the bullshit you see in Instagram and YouTube right now where people are just doing dumb shit, you know, where you see people doing stuff like, you know, grabbing a jug of water and doing, you know, dude, you had like a 90 pound dumbbell and you were doing rows yesterday. And now today you're telling me that you're going to have a gallon of water weighs eight pounds. You're doing, you know, a jug of water, you're doing rows, and you think you're going to get the same workout from eight pounds as you did from a 90 pound dumbbell. Who the fuck are you trying to bullshit? You don't know what you're talking about, you know? But like I said, all of the workouts that we've discussed right now are killer. They will get you in incredible shape, you know, any of them. Even if you just get to an elite level, you know, like I said, hold a handstand against a wall with one arm for a minute, another arm for a minute, and then both arms for a minute. Do the same thing with chin ups, you know, hold a chin up position, just hold the top position for a minute, you know, another minute, another minute, you know, L, uh, wall sit with one leg out, with the other leg out, with both you know, feet on the ground. I mean, that's an elite level of strength. That's an elite level of fitness. And that's an elite, you know, level of fucking being sexy naked if you're lean enough. So like I said, that's all stuff that you can certainly do at home. And those are real workouts. You know, I literally used to go to the gym and do each one of those workouts. I would literally go to the gym and do just body weight ring dips and pull-ups, you know, body weight squats, you know, and stuff like that. I would literally go to the gym and just get up, kick my feet up against the wall and do a handstand and hold it. So, like I said, those are legitimate, you know, workouts. That's not some bullshit I'm making up for my, you know, Instagram followers so they think that, you know, like Ted Shreds over here is, you know, going to show you how to get fucking his 350 pound negative 0% body fat body by doing, you know, rows with fucking a can of beans in your hand. That shit, that's bullshit. They're just trying to make crap up. But like I said, you could get legitimate uh, muscle. Okay, so somebody asked a question about, um, you know, about uh, tendonitis. Uh, you know, I've had issues mm, with tendonitis. I've had real issues with bursitis. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's honestly, that's the reason why my pull-ups are so weak, okay? Uh, what happened to me is I was uh, pushing really hard the first time I got up to 180 pounds for, you know, reps for my bar dips. I was pushing really hard. I had bursitis in my elbows. Once again, if you look at my old Instagram feed, you'll see, you know, I had these big puffy uh, Popeye elbows. And, um, you know, it kind of sucked, but I was okay. And then I had, like, a, like uh, an unplanned layoff. Okay, like my life went to shit, okay, and then I had to build back up. And I pushed too hard, too fast, and what happened is I damaged myself. Like it wasn't just precise, it was like I legitimately damaged my tendons and uh, a lot of shit. So I had to have a bad, bad, like major layoff. And it's very interesting because I injured myself being over-enthusiastic with weighted dips but after the injury, I was able to start doing dips before I could do pull-ups. And actually, right now, I'm only doing bodyweight pull-ups. I'm doing dips with 180 pounds, which is the most I've ever done and the most I ever want to do. I'm happy. I just want to stay here. But I'm doing pull-ups with body weight, And it's just like a week ago or maybe a week and a half ago, it just stopped hurting in my elbow when I was doing pull-ups. So, um, you know, it, it's weird. I hurt myself doing dips. But I was able to do dips painlessly again before I could do pull-ups painlessly. And uh, I was never very strong with doing pull-ups. I was doing pull-ups at like 55. I think I was pushing 60 pounds around my waist. Meanwhile, I'm doing dips with, damn, 180 pounds. Can't do dips anymore because my chest nerves become inflated and painful despite good form. What can I do? Dips are my favorite exercise ever. Okay, I'll get to you in a second. Um... Yeah, so anyway, like I said, it's like, I, you know, I, the, the strongest I've ever got with my pull-ups was like, uh, like 55, you know, plus pounds. But um, yeah, if, if you get bursitis, if you get tendonitis, first of all, fucking stop because it's going to get worse, okay? Cut down on the frequency. Find out what you do. Cut down on the volume. If what you're doing is you're doing, um, you know, pull-ups, and that's what hurts, cut down on the volume. Cut down on the frequency of the pull-ups you're doing. I am not a big fan of doing calisthenics every day. Because specifically because of that, I'm 45 years old and, you know, I, I don't make any excuses. I never think of myself as an old man. But, um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I you know, I, one issue that I have is my soft tissue, my joints, tendons and ligaments and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, so I have to be careful. 
So uh, definitely, I only do uh, upper body twice a week, weighted dips and pull-ups twice a week. You know, like I said, you just have to do what you can do. So I was able to do weighted dips with serious weight and not hurt my elbows. And, uh, you know, I couldn't do really pull-ups. So I would do as many pull-ups as I could. If it started to hurt, I'd just, you know, not do them, you know. And I know right now I'm at 180 pounds for my dips. That's the most I'm ever going to want to ever use for dips. That's my lifetime goal. And uh, I'm just going to stay there, you know. And since I'm staying there, basically my weak part, point in my body right now is my pull-ups. So I'm just going to maintain my squats, my 20 rep squats, my trap bar deads, my dips and I'm just going to work for like the next year at least to get my pull-ups decent. I mean, I'd really be happy if I could spend like the next year or so getting up to like 90 pounds for my pull-ups, you know, and I really wouldn't mind spending like two, two and a half years getting up to like, I'd really love to have my pull-ups. This is something I've been thinking about lately. My goal used to be 90 pounds for reps for pull-ups. Right now I'm thinking, why can't I do the same weight that I use for my, my dips, you know? If I could do dips with 180 pounds, why can't I do pull-ups with 180 pounds? So, you know, within a year I'd like to be doing 100 and uh, 90 pounds, 90 pounds extra weight, half of my body weight, and I'd like to get up to body weight, um, you know, when I do, um, within like a couple of years. Uh, somebody just asked me, do I, uh, do I do farmer's walk? I personally don't, um, I think it's a great exercise. Uh, farmer's walk is awesome. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically it used to be lifting two heavy dumbbells. Now these days, strongman, CrossFit, and you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Functional training is like such a big deal that you know places like Rogue, I think, make stands. They're like barbells with handles on them, and they have stands, so it's easier to load. And basically, you just lift up these heavy weights and walk as far as you can. And when you can't walk anymore, you put it down, but then you have to pick it up. So you'll go ahead and you'll just lift like, you know, 100 pound dumbbells and you walk like a quarter of a mile or something, you know, whatever. Uh, it's a great exercise. It's really good because you have to tense up all of your, you know, your shoulder muscles to keep your shoulders from, you know, dislocating, your traps to keep your, you know, shoulders from hunching down. And it's really good for your forearms and your hand strength. Really, really good um, functional strength movement. Um, excellent exercise. I personally don't do it. You know, but like I said, it's 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 a wonderful exercise. And I think that's one of the best exercises in the world for hand strength, for sure. You know, um, if you do it with one hand, with heavy weights, what you're doing is you're you're actually like if I hold a weight with my right side, I have to tense everything on the left hand side of my body. So doing that, you're actually building your core strength really good. I think that's Pavlov, um, you know, the Russian kettlebell guy. I think that's one of his exercises. Build the traps in my opinion, not that I care. I got large enough traps for face pulls alone. Yeah, exactly. I think they're, they're great exercises for building traps, the, the uh, farmer's walk. But like I said, if you go ahead and do it with one hand, basically you're building your know, core strength too because you have to like balance yourself out by tensing your left side when the weights of your right hand, for instance. So that's an excellent exercise. Yeah, farmer's walk. I don't do them, but it's an excellent. I'm down on 10% of battery. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh... Yeah, so anyway, like I said, you know, when I, I, I injured, I, you know, if you have a tendonitis or a bursitis, the only thing you can do is find out what, what aggravates it, cut down on the volume and the frequency of that. You know, and like I said, it's like, you know, this is the same thing that a lot of people say about, like, how do you, you know, pick up a, like a, a, a lagging body part? Don't, <laughs> you know, until you get advanced. Uh, is it possible to get in shape like Scott Atkins and Undisputed with a... Uh, by only Jim and, and, and Mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll get to you in a second. Uh, but like I said, though, it's like, like you know, don't, don't worry about a lagging body part. Don't worry about an injury. You know, if I can't do pull-ups because of my elbow, my bursitis, my tendonitis, but I can do dips and I can do squats and I can do deads, I'm at the li I, I never want to get any more weight on my back for squats, 20 reps or five reps. I want to maybe increase the volume, do like, five sets of five reps with 400 pounds instead of two sets of five reps with 400 pounds. I want to do maybe five sets of five reps with, um, you know, 180 pounds for dips instead of two sets of five reps. But I never actually want to go ahead and increase the volume. Okay, if you understand, or increase the weight. So basically my body's where I want it to be in terms of strength and all I'm waiting for right now is just for my, you know, my pull-ups to catch up. So, um, you know, that's my recommendation. If you have an injury, 
do whatever, you know, do whatever you go to your doctor, et cetera, et cetera, but do whatever you can that doesn't aggravate the injury, you know, and then like, you know, for the next year, you know, I'm just going to have to worry about doing my pull-ups. You know, I'm already doing squats where I want to do them. I'm already doing deadlifts. I'm already doing uh, favorite protein source. I'm already doing all these exercises, you know, where I want to be. The only thing I have to worry about actually increasing is my pull-ups. So that's awesome. Um, all right, what's my favorite protein source? If you're talking about food, uh, my favorite protein source is going to be chicken. I could eat a lot of chicken. Now, I could eat chicken all day, every day for the rest of my life, and that's very important. Another thing I like about chicken is it's, uh, it's protein. It's uh, 200 grams of chicken is 47 grams of protein, zero carbs, three grams of fat. So it's pure protein. If I want to increase the calories, if I want to increase the fat, all I do is add a fat source. So you'll see me eating almonds with it you know, whatever, you know, you'll see me adding a fat source. But in general, that's like my favorite one because I could eat it all day, every day. Uh, you know, if I want a fattier source, like a higher calorie source, um, maybe like I round steak, I love that, fried in butter, that's awesome. Um, you know, eight ounces is also about 48 grams of protein, but there's more fat, so there's more calories. After that, if I want to up the fat, I'm going to go ahead and have 80% uh, lean ground chuck. Um, you know, um, eggs, okay, uh, but like I said, chicken is my favorite food. If you want to talk about, uh, you know, favorite protein sources and supplement, I love drinking eggs. I love, um, one of the first things that I did was the old Vince Gironda thing. I took half and half um, and mixed it with eggs and threw some cinnamon powder in. Raw eggs, half and half, cinnamon powder. Basically, a fluid ounce of half and half for each egg. So it would be like six fluid ounces, a little bit less than a cup of half and half. Cinnamon powder, six eggs. I had a couple of those a day. That was that, that's awesome. I look forward to it. It's like a milkshake, but it doesn't spike your insulin and make you fall asleep. Um, you know, uh, I use milk and egg protein. Sometimes you have to usually special order it from somewhere. But uh, you know, I, I love drinking shakes like that. So if you want to know like what my food is, the only show I got with chicken is most boring to eat on a consistent basis. Uh, you, I, you know, you could do a lot of stuff with chicken. Uh, you know, you could spice it just any way that you want. You know, once again, that's the th you know the thing I like about it. You know, I could go ahead and, uh, you know, spice it up anyway. So, but yeah, so like I said, uh, I, I, I like to have like, you know, a cream or a cream mixed with milk, depending on how many calories I want, how much fat I want, raw eggs, depending on how much protein I need, um, you know, and uh, a, a pro protein powder. It's a milk and egg protein powder. It's not like whey. And, uh, you know, cinnamon powder. And that's, I love that. That, that. That's like the highlight of my day. Uh, I love drinking that first thing in the morning when I'm bulking. You know, so those are my two sources. I like these thick, creamy, keto weight gainer shakes. Check out my YouTube channel. You'll find them. Or, like I said, if it's just a food, it's going to be chicken for sure. It's be, the reason for the chicken is because I can eat it all day, every day. And, uh, like I said, it's like if you want fat, just add nuts, you know, or whatever to it. Uh, somebody asked me a question. I forgot what it was. Ah, at Scott Atkins. Yeah, Scott Atkins. Man, I love that guy. He is incredible. Um, my favorite physique from Scott Atkins. If you look at the original Ninja movie that he was in, that guy was shredded. He was not very big. He was very muscular, but he was not as big as he was later. But, um, you know, he was absolutely ripped to shreds. That is one of the perfect bodies, in my opinion. I can't believe he's not on posters everywhere, you know. Insane physique. Absolutely, positively insane physique he had. And then in uh, Boyka, you know, in Undisputed, he just got a lot bigger. You know, where he played the Russian or the Bulgarian, uh, you know, prisoner MMA fighter. Uh, you can certainly get that physique, um, you know, doing what I'm doing right now. You know, like I said, it's I basically I do... Um, uh, upper body, I'll do heavy weighted dips, pull-ups, which should be heavy weighted, but I have this elbow issue. Uh, I've recently started adding in um, rows and push-ups on rings, which I'm going to add weight to you know, pretty soon, depending on how my elbow hangs out with it. And uh, then twice a week, I do lower body. Uh, it's basically um, five rep squats, working up to a couple sets of five reps, uh, and 20 rep squats, and trap bar deadlifts, you know. So people ask me, they're like, what do you do for your shoulder? And what do you do for your tricep? And what do you do for your chest? It's like, I do dips with a lot of weight for my chest. I do dips with a lot of weight for my shoulder. I do dips with a lot of weight for my triceps. You know, like, like you know, like I've noticed like my girlfriend and, and, and women in general, people, I mean, no, 
no big secret that I am into the swinging lifestyle and I run around naked, <laughs> not now with the coronavirus, but I run around naked and women just love my ass and I don't do any, you know, butt plug, boot, scoop, booty, pump exercises or anything like that for my ass. All I do is squats, <laughs> you know, and trap bar deadlifts. That's all I do. And Okay, are we live? We got broken off there. But anyway, like I said, if you want to... Are we live? Things on? Anyway, like I said, uh, just one last thing here because apparently I'm having an issue with uh, YouTube, so I don't even know if you guys are seeing this or not. But if you are seeing this, um, what I wanted to say is you don't need...